just joining. We're on um, the online event, The Power of Sharing to Transform Communities. And this evening, we're going to have an event of two halves, really. So the first half, we're going to hear uh, two presentations um, from Morella and Jana. Um, and that's going to be uh, kind of laying out the an outline of the sharing economy, reason, the reasons why it's important to share, what impact that's having, and also kind of some practical examples to inspire you around how people are putting this into practice in communities already. Um, that's going to be the first half and we'll have as part of that kind of discussions and, and Q&A, etc. Um, and then the second half of the event will be more of a kind of deep dive how to led by Morella, who coordinates a mobile share shed project, which has recently um, relaunched as a mobile version. So it's been running for a few years as a kind of library of things, but recently relaunched. And so the second half of the event, Morella is going to share some of the experience from from that and um, have an opportunity for a really interactive session with questions about yeah going into detail about how that's been set up and how the lessons that have been learned from that can kind of hopefully help support those of you that are really actively engaged in setting up your own um, community sharing projects so that's a little bit about what we have planned for the evening um, just very briefly on kind of um, connecting together in this online space. Um, like I've said, we're really hoping to have an interactive discussion with you. We will, um, for the majority of the event, kind of keep most people on mute, um, but we really encourage you to comment in the chat box. We'll also have a few kind of breakout sessions, so people will be moved to um, breakout rooms. Um, if you've not done that, no worries at all, and those that have, you'll know how it goes, but you, you'll just have to kind of click a button to approve and then you'll get go into a smaller room so you can chat in a little bit more depth with uh, a few other people on this event. Um, we'll, we'll be doing that twice in this event. Um, we'll also be uh, recording this event so we can share it with you all afterwards as a resource and also for any people that um, aren't able to attend live this evening. Um, and so, yeah, we love, uh, I love seeing all of your faces on the video. So we really encourage people to have their videos on. But equally, if you um, feel uncomfortable with possibly appearing on the recording, um, it's unlikely because you're on mute. Um, but if you, if you would really prefer not to be on the recording, then feel free to turn your video off. Um, I think that that is everything on the practical side of introducing the event. I'm just gonna, um, like I've mentioned, um, I'm, I'm Flo from the Network of Wellbeing. And the Network of Wellbeing are running this event in partnership with Eden Project Communities and the Share Shed. So I'm just gonna check in with my uh, co-host, uh, Sam from Eden Project Communities, just in case there's anything that I've missed on the practical side of things. No, spot on, spot on. Flo. Perfect. Okay, thanks so much, Sam. Um, great. Well, then um, we're going to move on to introducing uh, the first of our speakers this evening, which is Diana Vogtgel from uh, Eden Project Communities. Um, so Diana works for Eden and connects community projects across the Midlands and east of England. And she also coordinates the England network for Eden Project Communities too. Um, this evening, she's going to share um, a kind of overview of, of the sharing economy um, with us. And I'm really looking forward to hearing her presentation. So I'll hand over to you, Diana. Hey, thank you. Thanks, Flo. And um, so great to see so many of you here. So normally um, it's me uh, doing what Flo has been just doing because I normally host quite a few of those workshops um, for Eden Project Communities, which are all about just, um, yeah, just so that we can each other inspire each other, that we can learn from each other and having this space um, uh, online as we all have to be online at the moment having this space to yeah just to explore some new ideas however when we were starting to um, think about this workshop specific workshop around sharing and the share shared that's something I'm very very um, yeah just passionate about and um, and uh, especially around the share sharing economy and actually my background even though I do campaigning and community engagement for years and years my actual background is in economics so um, so yeah so I was just thinking okay that's a great opportunity to bring some of that um, into this space so what I'm going to do is actually I'm going um, just for a few minutes talk us through um, a little bit what the sharing economy actually what are we talking about in a sense of value and what is the value of sharing and sharing and 
um, yeah, in economical terms, because of, often we talk about the sharing economy, but what do we actually mean by this? So we tr I'll try to explore this a little bit further with you guys over the next seven minutes. Um, however, one thing just to say at the very beginning, for me personally, what the sharing economy is not is something like what, um, well, the UK Statistical Office thinks the sharing economy is, and that is a lot around digital sharing in the sense of Airbnb, Uber, etc., etc. This is obviously a new form of economic, of well, a new form of enterprise, an enterprise which used um, normally apps or other digital tools to um, to bring a product uh, on the market and uh, market this. However, I don't see that really as kind of the, the way I see the sharing economy, which is a lot more about sharing resources within communities. So, so when we talk about sharing economy or when I use this term, just FYI, I'm talking here really about sharing resources in your community. But so yeah, just to just before um, we kind of kick off with the presentation, I just would like to run a quick poll with you guys. Oh, ah, which uh, it now says my polling session is inactive because I'm uh, using a different account. Sam, could you launch the poll for us, please? And it's just a little poll, just to find out a little bit more of what people think about sharing and um, where we are and what sharing looks like possibly also, well, with, with people um, who are in this group. So I'm gonna click end now and um, just share the results with you. So we can see it's really um, very, very sort of even that first one, how often do you share with people in your community? So it's even across the board um, from on a weekly basis all the way to a few times a year 23 to 26 percent shared out um, what kind of things are people sharing in their community um, so more often than not it's resources so one of the options resources tools and, and books so that's that's on 40 percent um, followed by food on 23 percent and then services like dog walking or babysitting not so much transport um, or time as in time banking and how much value do you think more sharing and caring neighbourhoods could add to the UK economy? Um, so the um, the top guess there was three billion, uh, followed by five hundred million. Okay, great. All right. Well, thanks for participating, and I think it's great to see that we have like um, we seem to have some very experienced people sharing it within their communities, and for and some people for whom this might be new or also possibly where you think oh there could be more sharing happening um in my community and if you do then you're exactly in the right space because Mirella will tell you a lot more about um how something um how resources can be shared in a, in a community later on great so um and the last question is an interesting one isn't it because as much as i think in my head in my heart i always wish i could talk about the economics of happiness I would love if everyone would put um, our communities and our well-being into terms and into onto the forefront of what and how we value things. But I guess if you if you just look around you and to the media, politics, etc., you you see that this is not the case. People put the value of things always have to be valued economically. They have to have a kind of a little pound sign in front of them to, for some people to understand their value. So therefore, um, one of the things we have been we had uh, have done um, a few years back uh, with, was um, to try to put a value on something which is called neighbourliness or just caring on connected communities. And actually, the added value that more caring and sharing communities could add annually to the UK economy is thirty two billion pounds a year. This is more than the UK is currently spending on defence. This is just over a half of the, what the UK is currently spending on education. So the number here we're actually talking about is really big. And this is why this is not just um, this. Actually, I think sometimes thinking about those numbers is quite important. Right. So let's go and have a look at some of those numbers then. And I'm just going to share my presentation with you. Let's start from the beginning. 
So great. And so yeah, so what is what is the power of sharing? Obviously, I think this image is really um, is what we uh, at Eden Project Community think about sharing in a community. It's not just sharing resources, but often it is also sharing time, it is sharing connection and creating a form of more resilient and connected community. Um, the other way we, uh, we have been thinking about sharing within communities is also in a sense of how sharing contributes to building communities. And a few years back, um, we have been running um, a program or a project which was called the Share Fair, which was a money-free market, which was set up in different town centers, in rural village, uh, on rural village uh, greens, in town centers and city centers, and which was set up to for people of that community to share. And one of the main, well, I think main assumptions or things we thought about, um, which are important is that it comes from the assumption that everyone has something to share. So when we're talking about sharing within our communities, so for me, this also a, for me also includes this idea that everyone in a community has something of value that can be shared. And that doesn't always have to be money. And this, um, obviously in a money free, uh, money free market that clearly wasn't money, but that can be time, that can be skills, that can be um, resources like seedlings, or clothes, or a swap, uh, a swap shop, or something like that. So, but everyone in a community, whoever lives within your community, has something to bring, which can be uh, can be shared, and it has value. So, I think that's the other thing when we think about sharing in economical terms. We also think about the value behind what we share. So, yeah. So. <clears throat> What are the benefits of sharing within your community? Obviously, quite well, I think the first thing you may think of is that there are economical benefits for the citizens or the participants. So um, I think if I think about sharing in the community, the first thing which comes to my mind is the drill, is the drill which we need uh, to just put on a few holes in the wall and how often we actually use that tool. Um, and or other things like a lawnmower or something which we might just use on a weekly basis, but we're all kind of using it. You know, every neighbor is using the same model and has the same tool sitting in their shed and sometimes even have to buy a shed to actually put that tool which they use once a week in. So there's obviously a lot of kind of um, benefits in the sense of uh, money saving and sometimes when we think about services like dock walking um, uh, where also there's a time sharing um, kind of a time um, benefit if you you know if you already walk one dog why not walk two so in the sense of um, economics of scale um, and for the dogs hopefully also economics of happiness um, there are obviously also are economical benefits for the wider community and um, that is um, very much around what kind, this is around this value we give to things. Um, if we are happier, if we are more connected, if we're possibly sharing resources and therefore don't have to buy that many resources, what is the effect for the wider community? And um, I go into a, a few more details uh, on that uh, in a moment. The other aspect of sharing for me is also the reduction of environmental and climate impact. And that is something which is in economics is called externalized costs, um, but also you can also call it the hidden cost, which I think is a bit more accessible as a term. Basically, wherever someone is producing and selling a product and not, and for example, using resources or, you know, um, adding to air pollution or to climate pollution. Um, and those costs are not um, paid for by the person who's buying that good. Those costs are externalized. So basically everyone in the society or in the community has, pay, has to pay for those costs. And as more as we share, we obviously can also really reduce the kind of the environment and air climate impacts um, some of our high levels of consumption have. But then there's also the reduction of social disconnection and the positive economic impacts on public services. So I think one of the main things we learned with the um, share fair um, project was that it was really all as much as it was about the sharing and maybe accessing certain resources. Um, 
there was a lot about coming together and it was always as much about placemaking as it was about kind of resource sharing. So just um, a few examples on the reduction of environmental and climate costs and that is clearly something like if we if we look at something like the lawnmower again uh, quite a few of those products may come from further afield so they might collate a few air miles or shipping miles as they are all being shipped say onto the same row of houses um, but then also obviously the resources which are used to produce goods um, and then the other example there possibly something like car sharing. We know where communities um, or people start to share transport that um, their car miles automatically go down. So, um, so there's just a few of those, but just to say it's not just about the resources and about creating community, there's also um, quite a significant environmental positive impact coming with this. <clears throat> Sorry to yeah. interrupt, just a short yeah. note that um, of time, you've got about one minute or so left. Yeah. Great. All right. Um, I'm, I'm nearly finished. <laughs> so, the, so just um, when you look at the big number, we, we just talked about the 32 billion pounds. So here are a few numbers how we came to those numbers. And um, so the benefits of actual sharing resources and services are already around 15 billion each year in the UK. So all the little things um, we share that adds up across the country to this amount um, of value and if we would share more um, then we would uh, could kind of even bring this number up to an additional 29 billion pounds and the social benefits again there is something around obviously the reduction on demands on the health service um, which currently stands at 2.7 billion with the kind of levels of connections and sharing and caring we have in our communities right now. However, if we would um, see this kind of um, projects being more widespread, we could push this number up to nearly eight billion pounds. And again, this is obviously, these are quite big numbers economically we're talking about. Similar, um, one of the other big ways of thinking about this is that happier communities um, are more productive. Productivity generally in, uh, in, hap in people who are happier rises by around 12%. And again, if you put that into, uh, um, into monetary terms, you end up with quite big numbers here. So to just finish it up and wrap it up, I think for, for us it is, and it is not just about sharing in a sense of what is a new way, a new way of economy we may look at. There are interesting concepts also as like the circular economy uh, and other concepts which are really interesting to look at. But when we look at it from a community perspective, I think it is as much as it's useful to share resources, it's also, it creates the connections in the community which then will make us more resilient for going forward towards the future. There we go. Back to you, Flo. Thank you so much, Jana. That was really um, interesting and helpful overview of the big picture of why sharing is so important and also the massive impact that it can make in terms of kind of social and environmental as well as economic terms. Um, so now I'm going to hand over to actually my network of wellbeing colleague, um, Mirella Ferres, um, who's the project coordinator at Network of Wellbeing or NOW for short. And she's also the kind of um, leader on our share shed, our mobile share shed project. So she's uh, had a lot of practical experience in setting up um, a sharing initiative. And so really looking forward to hearing her reflections on it this evening. Over to you, me. Thanks, Flo. I've got a little presentation here. Thanks everyone for joining us. And as Diana just shared now the big picture of the sharing economy, I'd like to share with you all a couple of projects that we have developed here in Totnes originally, which is in Devon, uh, southwest of England. And the first one is called Community Potlucks, which uh, started by identifying the needs and hearing it from our, from, from our members in our community about these needs uh, to socialize and 
in a very informal, friendly way. And particularly for people who live by themselves or, and also people who are new to town, people who have young you know, kids and might not necessarily be able to afford going to a pub on a Friday evening, that kind of thing. So we came up with this idea of a very simple idea actually to invite everyone to come together and share a meal. So it's literally a bring and share meal and in which you know people bring whatever they can or want. And we started seeing and at the first first event we had 70 people and that grew over time and we had an event that uh, we got over 300 people and as always we ended up with a feast and really lovely you know a lovely way to facilitate connection among people in the community and in that very subtle way also to feel you know that sense of belonging and cooperation groups kind of were formed there from single parents groups to even couples you know so it's really a nice uh, way of in this case food and we did that every month for about five years and we tried to then hand it over to the community which you know as a learning process for us kind of uh, was that what came up for us is that really required someone to really you know lead on it which is was the role we were playing and yet after five years of doing it we felt it was start it was time for us to start something else and and it hasn't been happening uh, as regularly as that and yet in terms of Totnes as a very small town and I have eight and a half thousand people it has really created or I guess contributed to a different way of doing things so much so that these things are still happening in other projects and what eventually happened was that we found out about the library of things in Prum and that's the, the subject we would like to explore here today in more depth. So, Yana mentioned to you the idea of the electric drill, and that's a very fast example because I imagine some of you know it. And I just wanted to raise the question how long do you think that an electric drill is used uh, in its whole lifetime? So not, not if you're a builder, but in a domestic kind of context. And the answer is 13 minutes, only 13 minutes. On the edge of our seats. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> so the idea is, is basically to kind of provide the, or sh I guess share that insight that we don't, needs to have an electric drill all of us and instead we need a hole in the wall and we can share an electric drill for instance and it just happens that library of things is a concept that does exactly that including tools including gardening and camping equipment musical instruments household appliances all sorts of things we first heard about it, about the project in Froome in Somerset in the UK, the share shop, and we were very inspired by it. And it just happens there are many, thankfully, there are many projects all over the world and we decided to set one up in Totnes. And this is how we started. So in this image, you can see the first, uh, the first location we had, uh, the first year, the town council let us use their garage for free and we gathered these items all 100% donated by the community and we just started in April 2017, so just three years ago 
and eventually moved to the network of well-being's office and that's the second picture you're seeing there i'm sorry morella just um yeah. i'm not seeing the um slides shared on the screen so i don't think that um the screen is sharing anymore since you dropped off just so you know thanks for so just bear with me Great. Cool. Thanks. Is that now? Yeah. yeah. Great. Thank you. So yeah. So you can see on the left is the image from the art garage when where we started, and the second image is from the office where we were. Until we had this mad idea of going mobile, and I say mad because at the time we didn't think how that would be possible in terms of the whole logistics around it and yet we were very fortunate to get a grant from the national lottery community funds through by the people's projects and allow which allowed us to create um, the, what happened to be the world's first mobile library of things which is this beautiful i'm very proud of our event uh, there's been a, a lot of work and love put into it and we launched it in July after being closed for three and a half months due to COVID. Uh, yeah, and we launched and we, we are now serving a few towns in Devon, so you can see in this map uh, where Devon is and at the moment we go to Totnes Around, let's say, and then we go to Burton, Buck Fastly, South Brains. And we have a weekly route. And it's been working really well. And like it's been an amazing journey for us. And the second half of this event, I'll be sharing a bit more like the practicalities of it for those who are interested in setting up something similar. And I just wanted to share with you all the, you know, what we're up to in terms of what kind of aims we have and, you know, what kind of guides us. So to support a more collaborati collaborative and sustainable lifestyle, it's good for the pocket, pockets, it's good for the planet kind of thing. It helps people reduce clutter and that's a beautiful process of this kind of project. We have a wish list in which, you know, sometimes quite often people ask something for us that we haven't got. So we put in our wish list, put a, a call out, and then almost always there's somebody else who is able to donate that. So it just keeps things flowing. And it's about, you know, bridging that needs and really resources that are already available. So we act from a place of abundance and, and of trust and we inspire people to engage in social change, you know, because all our members are proactively changing some habits around consumerism and cooperation. And just as a, a kind of curiosity note, curious note, I guess, in our case, for those interested in knowing the most popular items, you can see the list there. Um, it, it has a bit of seasonality, so at the moment, summer, our, our camping gear have, has been very popular, our gardening stuff, you know, blown oars and streamers, and yet overall, if you think of the history of our projects, these are the 10 most popular items. And that's all for me for now. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Marilla, um, and brilliant that you were able to rejoin us so quickly and so exciting to hear so much about the Share Shed project. And um, I can see that people have really enjoyed hearing about that in the chat box. Um, and thank you. Um, just to let people know, um, our Network of Wellbeing colleague Roger Higman is also on the call this evening. Um, so he's been uh, helpfully replying to some of your messages, your questions in the chat. Um, also to say um, part two of this event is going to be kind of dedicated to going into a bit more detail about our mobile share shed. So, so sharing kind of Morella's experience um, in the specifics of setting that project up. So for those of you that are really keen to set up similar um, things and want to ask kind of specifics about that, that will be the, the point at which um, to ask those questions. Um, I hope that you had 
short but sweet discussions with uh, those that you connected with in the breakout rooms. Um, I think, um, yeah, we, we will um, have another breakout room session in part two of the event, the event, this event, and we always want to give more time. And I think however long you get in a breakout room, it always feels like, oh, I just want to speak a little bit longer. Um, just, um, we like to encourage people, you know, to stay in touch with each other. So if you had a really good chat that was cut short, you can, um, in the chat box, um, find people. So if you click on the chat and then, um, just above where you type your message, there's a kind of little blue box that says you're typing to everyone. You can actually search to type to individual people. So if you're really keen to um, stay in touch with the person that um, that you were just kind of speaking to, then feel free to send them a private message to help you stay in touch. And we'll try and uh, like um, explore other ways we can support you to stay in touch with each other as well. Um, but we were looking at the questions um, in the chat um, before we went into breakout rooms and we noticed there's a lot of questions and enthusiasm around the uh, mobile share shed project, which is fantastic um, because that was what we planned to go on to in a bit more detail in part two of the event. Um, so I hope you had a good chance to kind of check in a little bit about what's been shared so far. And sorry, we don't have time to go into really um, really in depth into the, um, all of the topics, but we would like to give an opportunity to go into a bit more depth on the share shed particularly. Um, so the idea of um, the second part of this event is like I mentioned at the beginning to really give an opportunity to, yeah, delve a little bit deeper into how, how the share shed was set up um, with the idea to support those of you that are looking to do similar things. Um, so we're going to start this part of the event with hearing from Morella again with a more kind of practical hat on, kind of some of the, her top lessons learned. And then we're going to have uh, a kind of open uh, Q&A where, where a few of us will kind of manage your questions coming in specifically related to the share shed. So um, I'll hand over to Morella and then uh, some of us will keep an eye on your questions coming in on the ch um, chat box. Boom. Thanks, Flo. And just clarify, what I'll be sharing here is some kind of key steps if people are thinking of setting up a similar project. And then we can, when we get into Q&A, feel free to test lessons learned because there are tons of those. <laughs> and yeah, so if you are thinking of setting up a library of things in your community, I strongly recommend that you find others for that. It's surprisingly much more work than it might seem. And it's very important to have, you know, many hands and hearts and hands involved in the whole process. Also, the, as any community project, it's very important to check in with the community Hi. I do apologize, my I son was just saying good night. Good night. Saying good night, and then yeah. we're going. Hi. So good night. And just ask if the community yeah. is actually interested <laughs> oh, in such a thing. <laughs> uh, sorry, about it. because you know, like, and sometimes we assume that people would benefit from it, and it might not be the case. So in our case, we did community survey, so we literally were going to like the market square in Totnes is the case, you know, it's a, it's, it's a small town, so there's a high street, but whatever you find as key locations in your community or key projects, I guess, to invo get involved in, and just have a little survey in terms of like, would you use, would you be interested in using the thing? If so, what kind of things would you like to borrow for yourself? Is there anything you'd be able to donate? And that's also a great way to recruit volunteers. Like, would you like to be part of this process? Would you be, like to be involved? If so, leave your contact. And just in that kind of phase of our own process, we gathered literally by the time we opened the share sheds, we had 150 items, I believe, 100% had been donated, and which we weren't expecting at all. You know, the, the, that level of generosity and that level of things that are lying around with no good use. And, and also the same with volunteers. So we did have a, a, 
what we called an a meeting, a public meeting, uh, to talk with people about it more face to face. So whatever you know works for your context is just an important step, I guess, to you know checking really if people are interested in, in such an initiative. And in terms of partners, and then I, the third one is identify partners. In our case, the fact that the local town council let us use their garage for free meant that we had the location secured, you know, which was extremely important for us to begin with. And the agreement was uh, that would be for six months as a, as a kind of pilot thing. And this is just, again, a step for you to think about, you know, what are your resources? What do you have? And what are your needs? And really try to find out, again, in your context, you know, like re repair cafes, if you have one already established in your community, that's an obvious partner uh, because things do break. You know, that's, the, that's a given of such a project and uh, such a project, you know. Um, in our case, uh, we are a project of the network of well-being with a charity and that has been extremely helpful for us in terms of applying for funding. Uh, so that's something important to consider, you know, what kind of grants you would be looking for and what kind of structure they are, you know, criteria they, they require. And yeah, funding, apply for funding, for sure. It's these things do cost uh, money and that's an ongoing challenge of social projects. Location, uh, our experience, again, in Tottenham is, is that it's absolutely key to be where people are, you know, what's the flow. As I mentioned, in, in Tottenham, we have a high street where it's very, uh, where all the businesses are and all that, the flow of, you know, people market square. And we were just off that garage I showed you a picture of, was just a bit off the high streets like 10 steps, 10, 15 steps. And what happened when we moved to our office, which was in the high streets, we realized, you know, we heard from so many people, oh, I never made it there. So it's absolutely, you know, key that you find a prime location in your community, in your town. Put a call out, out for items. So that's, as I mentioned, by the time we opened, people had donated loads of things and you know, even if you have a Facebook group, you haven't got the resource nor the expertise to set up a website, though that eventually becomes essential. And I just start with the Facebook group and just put a call out. These, these are the main items. You know, that list of the most popular items to begin with that. And it's very similar, having spoken with people from other projects in the UK and abroad, that list, doesn't vary that much, the top 10 items kind of thing. In terms of the system, so to kind of admin the whole loaning process, we use something called Loan This space allows us very practically to have a, a photo of the item, the price, the description, that kind of thing. People can look it up place in reservation, become a member, place a reservation, a reservation, and, you know, it helps us manage the whole process. There's also a similar software called MyTurn. They are very similar. They are run by people who really believe in the ethos of sh sharing and are very keen to support such projects. So, you know, I, I recommend them both. We we happen to use Lens Engine for the share sheds. In terms of the website and promotions, I said it, it it doesn't require to have a website to begin with, and yet at this, some point it will become essential because of the software and it's very helpful to share the information in a way, kind of basic for a project. Uh, what is also very, very helpful we have found is to be able to tell this story. So, you know, for those who think, oh yeah, it's a nice idea, but 
might not be able to use it or I don't get it, you know, like a, a, a no going, like something that people ask us quite often is like, oh, what do, what happens if people break an item? Don't you don't you fear that people will steal the items? That kind of thing. So through the website, we choose to share a bit of that kind of information, and then you know, promotion is an ongoing journey. Uh, we you know we've been here for three years and now in, in these new towns and i still believe there are a lot of people who would benefit from our project who just simply don't know about it yet so that's again a major you know journey and i put there so the added celebration there because i think that's a, a very important step in, in these kind of activities sometimes an under uh, valued step which is very important whatever is the milestone you, you you know you happen to reach please make sure to celebrate that because it's a lot of and it's very rewarding and therefore very important to celebrate it so i just wanted to give you an overview of you know kind of the basic things involved in setting up similar initiatives and i saw a little bit in the chat box some questions so feel free now to i think between roger yeah Flo, i'll hand over to you and, and just to say also sorry just one more little thing is that here's our email address and if you have any questions feel free to email us and that we agreed to have a so-called office hours so basically an opportunity an hour slot that if you have, if you are thinking or already in a journey to set up something similar, and you think we could help, I will be available on the 15th of September from 11 to 12, that's British summer time. Uh, and then Flo will email you with all the information and link it if you want to sign up. But just so you know that there is that opportunity again to, for us to connect. Thank you. You know close to setting up your project and you just need a bit of help with one or two questions um so that's just a, a few um details on how we're going to support um everyone to kind of save the learning from this evening um but i think i will now um hand over to um case caseland sorry i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing your name correctly um but to give a bit of a summary of some of the questions um to put to morella that's okay. Um, I guess there was quite a lot of questions around um, how people can get involved just now while everyone's um, socially distancing. I noticed that. And just recently there, there was a question about um, how do people, if they're not online, do they just turn up at the shed? How does that work for people that can't access things online? Yeah, sure. So in terms of health and safety, especially in, in, in the COVID context, we have been more proactive around cleaning disinfecting our items regularly or leaving them in quarantine for three days 72 hours which is what is recommended we when we launched it we were very like on it like really on the case and we had traffic cones all over it and Doing it four days a week and moving places in the same day turned out to be quite not very practical to do that. And surprisingly, you know, just people kind of have, we've noticed how people have different levels of, you know, concerns around social distancing and some are much more mindful than others and all that. So in our case, just especially now we have hand sanitizer available all the time our staff and volunteers wear face uh, covers we have a big sign saying please respect social distancing we allow just one person or just one bubble you know so if a couple or who are hanging out anyway or like two friends who are coming together they can go in the van together but just them and yeah, these are the kind of measures we put in place. To begin with, we said we would just accept card payments 
and just new members joining online. And we noticed after a few days that one that was really hard for those who don't have access to the internet, like it's one of the questions that came up. So we felt that by requiring people to join online that we're excluding those who haven't got access to the internet. And still a lot of people are using cash nowadays and we felt we were losing kind of trades. So right now we, we accept cards and cash and we do encourage cards preferably, but we do handle cash. That's a choice that we made. And in the same goes with memberships. So people have always been able to join the share shed by uh, coming to us and filling in a form. And I just want to clarify this thing about models. So each project has a, a model that is very kind of unique, I guess. The share shed, the way it works that people become a member first and they can do that, as I said, online or in person. And that requires to fill in, fill in a form just with some personal information like name, address, email, telephone number agree with terms and conditions so that's a very important thing to have you know terms and conditions that kind of basically um, make sure that you're not liable if someone's using a hedge trimmer and chops a finger off it's not your fault you know unless you knew that the the hedge trimmer was fault then this is a whole different thing but in terms of the project uh, I saw some questions about insurance. So we do have insurance and we have these terms and conditions. People have to agree with that in order to become a member. And then in our case, we ask for a membership fee between five to 30 pounds and that's for a whole year. And just to say, you know, uh, we, we chose that model because that means that people in low income can afford so it used to be one pounds from one pounds and we found that you know that wasn't uh, very kind of sustainable of, of uh, from our sides and so that's you know it's an ongoing journey in terms of balancing inclusivity and being accessible and affordable to like making a project sustainable so that's how we've been doing now between five to 30 pounds for a year and people that is people whoever you know they don't need to explain they choose whatever they want to pay and then everything every item has a cost for that's our loans work on a weekly basis and again it's a choice of our team some projects kind of require a they have free memberships. Some require, you know, what I, I think is quite a high price for membership, but then it's different value for money. You know, some do that loans on a week, uh, on a daily basis. So it varies quite a lot. And does that answer your question in terms of the, the online thing? We, we, we are very mindful of it and try to make things very accessible. Mm. To, yeah, that's to really those, helpful, Marilla. Yeah, who don't you. use the internet. Yeah, yeah. Um, and thank you for the question. And just to say, um, if others with questions, feel free to um, um, write them in the chat again if, you're, if you've got questions that are kind of maybe, because there's been a lot of questions um, coming in, if you, it, that maybe if you asked earlier in the, um, in the session. So a few kind of follow-up questions coming in on that, Marilla. How, how much do you charge per item? Um, and could you give some examples of higher charges, please? Sure. So yeah, it definitely depends on the item. It depends on the context too. So for instance, carpet cleaners, by far the most bored item and pretty much in every single project, at least in the UK, not for instance in Brazil where I come from, where there's no carpets, it wouldn't be the case, <laughs> but here it is very expensive items, at least 200 pounds of, you know, a good ish one and we couldn't find no anyone to donate it to us so we decided to buy it and because they get used so regularly literally our carpet cleaners there's one that's booked um, until the end of october now it's all reserved 
a day break, you know, so you have to cost that to the maintenance. So we, we charge 10 pounds a week, which is pretty affordable. And again, it's a choice that we made. Some projects charge 15 pounds a day. Some projects, you know, it varies. But that's an example. Um, Lawn mowers, six pounds a week. Electric drill, 350 a week. So let's stop using it for 13 minutes in its whole lifetime and borrow it from a library of things near you. <laughs> Um, and uh, Anna's asked, are there any projects that take deposits for items? Yeah, yes, for sure. So in our case, the only item that we require deposits is a time-lapse camera, which we invested in and for when we were building the van, converting the van, we wanted to capture that. You know that time lapse that just kind of speeds up the whole process. It's really nice little videos, and that costs almost four hundred pounds. So in our case, we require a deposit of twenty pounds. You know, and it's co it costs thirteen pounds. You see how affordable we are for a week, and you know people can access that, which might be something they could wouldn't be able to afford otherwise. So that's the only item we require deposits, but yeah, many other projects do require. And I, and I just want to say, because that's, I don't know, it has come up in the chat box. I can't multitask to that degree. Uh, in terms of, you know, stealing, because this is something that people ask us quite often. In, in three and a half years of the share sheds, we had two items that went missing. One was a hand blender, which is a very cheap item and we believe that it was actually mixed up. The person who bought it actually said to us that they were moving house. And one that we don't know, which was a little angle grinder, which worth about 40 pounds. And we, we don't know it because it was a different town. We didn't bother that much to follow up beyond emails and phone calls. And the, and the reason I find it that's important to mention here is because there's so much uh, skepticism and just worries and fear around it. And, and, and I get it, you know, at the same time, I think it's important to, you know, as a team, we always agreed to act from a place of trust. And, and that doesn't mean that we are, you know, naive and perhaps silly, it's just like, is believing the, the abundance and we've actually experienced quite the opposite of the, the level of generosity you know sometimes things breaking things breaking people coming up bringing us a new item said actually and we're like no no we don't require that it's just like no i want to support you or making a very generous donation financially if they are able to so i just want to point that out because i think it's very important because we've been very privileged to experience that you know, very regularly. And that's really nice and refreshing. Yeah, thank you, me. And that seems to be reflected in other people's experience. I see in the chat box, Alan has said, we've lent over 120 items in 10 weeks, not lost anything. Sometimes things awesome. come back in better condition. Wow, that's brilliant, Alan. Um, and I think that yeah, I think that kind of um, mindset shift is a really important part of the Share Sheds work, actually, that, you know, it's about as well as sharing physical items it's about kind of building trust and and that's why you know the title of this event transforming communities you know creating that sense of community connection through sharing physical things and and um uh, yeah and not having the trust in in others around you i think a project like the share shed can really help to encourage um so if um a, a kind of question following that if Abby's asked, what procedure would you follow if an item wasn't returned, just for others thinking of this kind of thing? We have an automatic email that goes out, so we can set up that, you know, I was mentioning Lint Engine or My Turn as the software we use, and you can set a, a reminder email, which goes out the, the previous day when the item is due to be back, and then however many days you want to set as a reminder. So that's the first step. The second one, we, so after they get that email, 
if they don't get back to us. And literally that happens a lot. People forget, forget or like, oh, it's away, you know, that kind of thing. So there is a bit of work around, you know, following up with items and people. We form them up, have a chat. And it has happened a few times that we go to their place. And, and what happens just like, oh, I'm so sorry. I never meant to keep the item for so long. I just never got around to go get back to you. And literally there was once that we went to someone's house and it was all the things they had, three items was were in the porch. Like, they <laughs> were just hanging there. So we just talked to them and we got it back. And we usually ask for a donation if people are able to. So we haven't had any kind of outrageous, you know, because beyond these two items that went missing, we say, you know, so some, some things do overdue, I don't know, 10 days, we say like, can you make a donation? And some people are very inclined, just like, oh, how much would that be? And pay exactly the, how much that would be. And sometimes just like, he's too quick. And, you know, and we, it's all good. Yeah. Um, thanks, Minnie. So I'm going to um, ask you a few questions from a little bit earlier in the chat, um, linked to kind of the running of the Share Shed. And then I'm going to check in with um, Kayslan and uh, Roger as well, if they've got any questions they'd like to pick out from um, earlier in the chat. So earlier on, um, it was Susie asked, um, how many people do you have running the Share Shed? And Lucy asked, um, she'd love to know about different types of organisations. So do you have info on charity, kick, etc. Um, so maybe you can um, um, address those questions whilst there. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I, I struggled to answer the first one, how many people are running it, because it's a team effort. It's a major team effort. So as far as a member of the Network of Wellbeing team, I'm kind of responsible to coordinate, for coordinating the project. Uh, that goes with the support of my colleagues, including Flo, including Roger here, big time, you know. So you, you, if I said it's just me from the team, because it's, it's not. So with promotion, you know, setting up such events, which is spreading the word, you know. So, but essentially, in terms of managing it, uh, it's me and my colleague, Mark, who is employed 20 hours a week. And we have an amazing, amazing team of volunteers. And I just wanted to give a shout out to Dee, who was here. I don't know if she's here still. Because she is, I think. She, I don't know if she's awake. She's an early bird. Uh, she's amazing. Without her, we wouldn't be able to, to, yeah, to be where we are. And it makes me emotional, actually, because there is a lot of generous and kind people, too. And because... Uh, Thankfully, so many people feel enthusiastic about the whole concept. They are, you know, if they're able to, they will help. And that, yeah, we, yeah, for us, it's been absolutely essential, the support from our volunteers. And that involves help with running the share shed when we're open, sorting through items, you know, when we're getting them donated so we patch test electric items so to make sure that's all safe then we have to label photograph add to the system that kind of thing and um, you know find a place for it so as well as the van uh, i think it's worth saying that we have a garage in totness which again another very kind man let's use it for free and that's where we store the big things like extendable ladder um wheelbarrow we have a car roof box you know those very giant <laughs> items that it would be very inconvenient to have in the van and or bicycles so we have that for that but they are, they just happen don't, they're not the most popular items so for us what we're doing is that we if people reserve, we require people to reserve beforehand these items and then we can add to the van and take it to the towns. So remind me the second question. Um, like, about the kind of setup of the, the structure. Authority. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Again, varies massively. Uh, it's definitely worth talking with various projects. As I said, we are a 
project of a charity and that is tremendously helpful when applying for funding. It also means that I was able, well, I'll, because I just happened to be the person doing it, to get into the Social School for Entrepreneurs program uh, for the second time. And that, again, is a, a major help. If anyone's thinking of, you know, embarking this journey or already is somewhere in the process, definitely worth is I definitely recommend checking out the school for social entrepreneur if you're in if you're in the UK although they are all over the world actually because they have these programs like the startup literally for to help you to, even to decide which structure serves you better and now we're in the second program which is the trade up program and it's being yeah super super helpful I wouldn't know you know to, I wouldn't be able to say now what's is the best thing for you because it really varies depending on the context but it's mm -hmm. definitely worth having a good look at it because there are so many nuances you know for each kind of choice i guess thanks me and maybe we can include a link to the school of social entrepreneurs in the um, follow-up email for people to check that out sure um so we've got about uh, just under 10 minutes um, left. So I'm going to just check in with Caselan and then uh, Roger about any um, other questions you want to flag up um, from previous questions in the chat. Um, one that I spotted coming up, it did get a bit of an answer, but I thought it was interesting just to ask whether you ever get any complaints from local traders if they feel like they're losing out because you're loaning tools out to people that might otherwise go to them for jobs. Mm -hmm. um, no, we haven't had any direct complaint we had we've had two occasions when people raised that because there was this, um, a business hiring tools you know in, in, in Totinus for instance there is a, a business that hires tools out the thing is that they are very powerful tools what they offer it's a different kind of standards so for instance as, as a community project we cannot offer any petrol powered tools because of insurance, nor we can have chainsaws. So that's the kind of equipment, like more, you know, hardcore stuff that you would go to these shops for. Whereas our, our items like lawnmowers are more for domestic use. And yeah, I, I don't know if there has been any issues. No one has ever kind of voiced it to us directly. Well, and if anything, we've had quite the opposite, a lot of appreciation from a lot of people. Thanks, me. And I think Roger has been um, helpfully responding to many questions in the chat. And that was one of them that you were saying you were pleasantly surprised about, Roger, in terms of the positive response. But do you want to flag up any other questions, Roger? I think the other, the other one that I've seen, it's a difficult one to answer, is how do, it's from Rachel Giles, which is how does the share shed actually build connections across the community rather than between the borrower and the share shed? I thought was really interesting and maybe well, you could say something more about changes of culture but also the other activities we've been doing like the share fest and things like that yeah De definitely these two aspects that roger mentioned you know it's a kind of systemic change of culture so for instance you know once you get the idea really because a lot of people say oh, it's a great idea but i don't need anything and then they come to us and start looking at stuff. And this is why it's really nice in our case with the mobile version is that people can see, you know, everything there. Whereas we were in an office that was not very accessible. So it, it becomes a bit of abstract. Whereas when people see the things you have on offer, that really helps. So for instance, we have a chocolate fountain and we have, you know, uh, a reusable part kit. So even if you have all your tools you, you need, all your, you know, garden equipment, if you have a child and you're hosting a party, suddenly you have bunting, you know, lots of things and that you never thought that, you know, would be helpful to begin with. So, and once you do that, well, there's also kind of i believe in, in energy that kind of thing so and then you start sharing among your friends and your family members your neighbors so i think that organically happens one way or another for some people more some people less and yet it does because it's a co is a shift in the culture and how we live i think COVID's one of the 
kind of, I wouldn't say positive sides of COVID because, you know, there's nothing positive about so many people dying. And yet it's just like this realization of how much more collaboration we're able to do and how much more resourceful we can be creative, you know, and, and kind of just more genuine, I guess, as a species and kinder with our next learning, whoever it is. And I think that's what the magic of sharing is about. And, and just say when this question was raised now, I, what came to my mind was like, we've had so many connections happening just at that moment in the share shed, you know, between people coming to board while they are waiting. And I do see that we're having a direct, direct impact on people's well-being that way too. And as Roger pointed out, we also run some events, so some repair events like uh, standard repair cafes or restart parties. This year, or this yeah, this year we did the big fix, joined the big fix campaign. That was a national um, initiative to repair things, main things, and we also run a share fest, which we were planning. So a, a, a whole day of festival, day festival to celebrate sharing, repairing, making and swapping. So we had a whole day of activities that, that was in Totnes in 2018, gosh. And we had over 800 people coming. So it was extremely su successful and very, yeah, very beautiful to see, you know, that level of, you know, kids, elderly and adults all, you know, coming together to work on something, make cards, whatever it was. And, and again, that, that's, it's another, you know, little seeds here and there that's going out and being cultivated. Yeah, thank you so much, me, for sharing that um, that kind of deeper intention behind the share shed and that kind of level of culture shift that can result. Um, it's been yeah really wonderful to hear from you, um, hear some of the lessons learned, and to hear from um, have this discussion here from everyone in the chat, here from Jana earlier. So. Um, we're, we're drawing to the close of our time together this evening, um, but I really want to just take our, our last few minutes together to flag up some further ways to kind of keep this discussion going because it's clear that there's so much energy and momentum around um, this discussion and yeah, really want to kind of support you guys and, and stay connected. Um, so first of all, just to give a um, shout out to Sam um, for putting in the chat um, a, a little bit if you scan up a little bit, Sam's um, put the link to a survey um, about this particular event. It really helps us um, in running these events just to kind of get feedback, helps us and, and the Eden Project Communities team. Um, so if you, um, ah, and thanks for putting the, the link again, just there. Um, so yeah, please do share your feedback and that's always really helpful. Um, another, um, in terms of kind of future events, um, the Network of Wellbeing and Eden Project Communities will be running um, another free webinar together on a, on a bit different but related topic about kind of build, community building. Um, and I've just put the registration link um, to that in the chat um, box. So feel free to join us there and like I mentioned before we will save a copy of the chat box so what I'd like to do in the last two minutes whilst I'm just sharing other ways to stay in touch is just invite um, everyone that's joining from a sharing initiative if you haven't done so already elsewhere in the chat please do share the name of your initiative and its website and if you would feel comfortable doing so your email address because I think that that I've seen that some other people have done that already in the chat and it, that's going to be a shared resource so if you feel comfortable if you want to give a shout out to the even if you're not running it yourself but you know of one in your community um, because I know that there's a question and maybe this is just a good question to kind of end on that's been raised by I think Jules um, in the chat box about a kind of um, directory uh, a kind of national directory of libraries of things um, and there's a real kind of enthusiasm for people to connect with others um, and, and stay in touch so maybe Mirella I don't know very briefly if you if you've got any any response on that on the kind of national I know there's a kind of national group coordination effort so maybe you want to very briefly share on that yeah there's a Facebook group for all the um, UK based 
sharing projects, library of things in two libraries. Um, I'm sure if you put Library of Things UK, I think it's UK Network, more or less the name of the group. And we had a meeting in 2019, which was amazing. And we might have another one, very likely to have another one when this whole COVID things is much better. Yeah, great. Thanks, me. And we can include the link to that Facebook group in the follow up email as well. It's going to yeah. be a packed email. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, and just to also, Mirella mentioned the Sharefest um, that we ran last year. Yeah, <laughs> I'm also confused about the email. Anyway, that we previously ran in Totnes in Devon, but this year we're talking about running a kind of a smaller but online uh, version in November. So watch uh, this space if you've signed up for, um, if you've given permission to sign up for the Network Wellbeing newsletter, you'll hear about that close to the time or um, check check it out, uh, you know, follow the Share Shared so, uh, Network Wellbeing on social media because we're really excited to find, offer more opportunities for people that are passionate about this topic to connect with each other, learn from each other. Um, so thank you all, everyone for putting in your website links, your emails. It's wonderful to see all of the projects that have been joining us this evening. Um, thank you so much, Morella, again, for sharing your wisdom and Jana too. Um, I'm just going to check in um, to see if there are any final closing remarks from Jana and Morella or anyone on the Eden team and um, before we close. I just want to say thank you to everyone. It's really nice to so many people. It's very, yeah, awesome actually that, you know, this is happening. Sharing revolution. Yeah. Thank and thanks for bearing with me in my IT family households issues. No at all. Thank you. And Jana? Yes, no, I think, uh, yeah, just um, great to see so many people. And I think there is definitely, uh, we just started to touch on the power of sharing. I think um, share chats and library of things is one aspect of that. I think Sam started to have, we started a bit side discussion on the chat, also on time banking. There were quite a few um, loads of ways how our community started sharing. And yeah, just excited to see um, so many people being interested in it. And I think we will be sharing our content contact details and also um, how you can stay in touch so any further questions or anything just well, just let us know yeah and uh, just a final shout out for Morella's office hour is going to be on the 15th of September is that right me and um, so if people want to have a more in-depth chat with Morella um, 15th of September 11 till 12 um, yeah. pm put it in your diary and, and look out for the 